Uh, so I'd like to shift the topic to um, different methodologies that were used in AI. So good old-fashioned AI, as it's, I guess, labeled now, um, made strong use of formalisms in the tradition of Frege and Russell mathematical logic, for example, or uh, derivatives of it like uh, non-monotonic reasoning and so on. Um, it's interesting from a history of science perspective that even very recently these approaches have been almost wiped out from the mainstream and have been largely replaced in the field that calls itself AI now by uh, probabilistic and statistical models. Um, my question is, what do you think explains that shift and is it a step in the right direction? Okay, I heard Pat Winston give a talk about this years ago, uh, which one of the points he made is that it, uh, AI got to the point and robotics got to the point uh, where you could actually do things that were useful. So it turned to the practical applications and uh, somewhat, did maybe not abandoned, but put to the side uh, the more fundamental scientific questions, just caught up in the success of the technology and achieving specific goals. Uh, to maybe, engineering. Yeah, it became, which is understandable, but uh, it would, of course, direct people away from the original questions. And uh, I, I have to say myself that I was very skeptical about the original work. I thought it was, first of all, way too optimistic. Uh, it was assuming you could achieve things that required real understanding of systems that were barely understood. And uh, you just can't get to that understanding by throwing a complicated machine at them. Uh, but if you try to do that, you are led to a conception of success, which is self-reinforcing, because you do get successes in terms of this conception, but is uh, very different from what's done in the sciences. So for example, to take an extreme case, uh, suppose that uh, somebody says he, he, wanna, he wants to eliminate the physics department and do it the right way. The right way is to take endless numbers of videotapes of what's happening outside the window and feed them into the biggest and fastest computer you have, you know, gigabytes of data, and do complex statistical analysis, uh, you know, Bayesian this and that, and, uh, and you, you'll get some kind of prediction about what's going to happen outside the window next. In fact, you get a much better prediction than the physics department will ever give. Well, if success is defined as getting a fair approximation to a mass of chaotic, unanalyzed data, then it's way better to do it this way than to do it the way the physicists do. You know, no thought experiments about the frictionless planes and so on and so forth. But you won't get fundamental, you won't get the kind of understanding that the sciences have always been aimed at. What you'll get is approximation to what's happening. And, and that's done all over the place. Like, uh, you know, suppose you want to predict tomorrow's weather. Mm. Well, one way to do it is uh, a weather complicated system. Uh, one way to do it is to say, okay, I'll, f I'll get my you know, statistical priors, if you like. So uh, there's a high probability that uh, t tomorrow's weather here will be the same as it was yesterday in Cleveland. So I'll stick that in. And uh, the, you know, where the sun is will have some effect. So I'll stick that in. And, you get a bunch of assumptions like that. You run the experiment, you look it over and over again, you correct it by Bayesian methods, you get better priors, and you keep going. You'll pretty get a pretty good approximation to what uh, tomorrow's weather is going to be. That's not what meteorologists do. Uh, they want to understand how it's working, uh, certainly not physicists. And these are just two different concepts of what success means, uh, what achievement is. Uh, it, in this, my own field, language studies, it's all over the place. Like computational uh, uh, cognitive science applied to language, uh, the concept of success that's used is virtually always this. So if you get more and more data and better and better statistics, you can get a better and better approximation to some you know, immense right. corpus of texts, like everything in the Wall Street Journal uh, archives. But you learn nothing about the language. Uh, and uh, a very different approach is the, which I think is the right approach, is uh, uh, to look for, the, to try to see if you can understand what the fundamental principles are that 
deal with the core properties and recognize that there's going to be lots of, in the actual usage, there's going to be a thousand other variables intervening, kind of like you know, what's happening outside the window. Uh, and you'll sort of tack those on later on if you want better approximations. That's a different approach. And, it's the, and these are just two different concepts of science. The second one is the one that has been the, what science has been since, say, Galileo. That's modern science. Uh, the, uh, uh, the approximating unanalyzed data kind is a sort of a new approach. Uh, not totally, you know, there's things like that in the past, but it's basically a, a, a new approach which is, have been accelerated by the existence of massive memories, very rapid processing, uh, which enables you to do things like this you couldn't have done by hand. You know? But I think uh, myself that it is leading, it tends to lead the subject like computational cognitive science into a direction of uh, maybe some practical applicability, but away from understanding.